guys. Look at that studio. Look how nice and clean it is. Oh my gosh. You should have seen it like a few days ago. It was in an absolute state. I couldn't handle it. I was getting claustrophobic. I'm not one to have a messy studio for too long. I usually clean up after myself. But the past few weeks, I've been like grinding and grinding and grinding and cleaning was pretty much the last thing on my mind. So I kind of avoided it and the floors, it was just, oh, it was a state. But now it's nice and clean. So my mind is nice and fresh. So yeah, my brain is clear. The month of Feb, it has been amazing. I've had the best time. It's been exhausting. Yeah, average day for me is usually get up at half past four, five. I'm in the studio by six. Then I leave the studio around six, half past six, seven at night. It's been amazing. A lot of learning, more learning. You never stop learning. Some frustrating moments, but yeah. We'll get into that in a second, but I just want to remind you guys to check out my Skillshare class and introduction to 3D clay printing. And it's really for beginners to see what they need to learn, what they need to focus on, and also what equipment you may need if you want to start 3D clay printing and to become a 3D potter. I really enjoyed making the class. I took so much time and effort just to make sure everything was perfect. So I hope you guys enjoy it. The free link is below. I know Skillshare does charge for classes, but the link is free, so don't pay anything. That's all I'm saying. This month, I've mainly been concentrating on my portfolio, building it up. Last year, I actually did a few sketches for artworks that I wanted to make, and they've obviously been adapted a little since then, but I've kind of stuck to the main core idea that I wanted. And, you know, as artists, I'm sure if you're creative, your mind kind of goes like this. You second guess yourself. So you're like, I'm okay. I know what I'm doing. Oh, no, that idea is not as good as it could be. Let's work on it a bit more. Yes, it's absolutely fabulous. The next day is like, I don't know what I'm doing. Because as a potter, when it comes to creating things for other people, it's it never truly feels like it's your design. It always feels like something that they want and that they kind of help to create which is lovely it's like a collaboration but i never truly felt that my designs were actually mine i've just been kind of working on that and just trying to figure out the right way for me to approach this as an artist and just feel like the artwork is truly mine it's truly my idea and what is the idea that i'd like to portray and show to the world because i feel that's really important there was something that happened during the month that i just want to chat about and touch on I feel that a lot of artists and creatives may be feeling this way and that is doubt I was pretty solid in what I was doing and where I was going and one comment derailed all of that just one artists don't doubt yourself just keep going and keep fighting I had to go through that and be like you know what I'm doing this for me, I'm not doing this for you. So, art is subjective. Not everyone's always gonna like your work. But be kind, be kind to one another. Bring each other up. We don't need to bash each other. We just need to bring each other up, hold each other up and be kind. Everyone has their own taste and that's totally okay. So yeah, I just wanted to address that. Before I forget, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you that have been reaching out on Instagram. It's been so much fun talking to you guys about 3 d clay printing, where in the process you are, what you're up to, and also talking about technology and art and how the two are being combined in different ways. It's just been really exciting and fun conversations. And if you would like to contact me, if you have any questions, you are welcome to do so. Check out my Instagram and we can have a nice chat. I look forward to hearing from you guys. What else happened this month? Let's get to the good stuff. So, <laughs> the tale of the exploding clay continued. Yes. I had a moment where it just went like, Pow! and there was clay everywhere. It went like all over the walls. It was amazing. I was like, wow, Hendry, you really outdid yourself this time. I finally managed to solve the problem because it hasn't happened again since I did this. And this was weeks ago. 
is I found a spanner and all I did was just tighten the connector more with the spanner, making sure that the connector and the clay container were so connected that it wouldn't budge. In conclusion, the problem was solved with a spanner and brute force. There's a freaking fly in my studio and I don't know where it is. So I'm sorry if you can hear in the background. Hopefully the mic is like muting the sound. So I don't know where it is. I live in Africa. Sorry. So yes, where was I? I've had to baby a lot of my prints. And by babying, I mean I have to sit there with a hairdryer and be like, and just sit there and watch this thing print. And just blow hot air onto the clay because, of course, Hendrine wants some crazy angles. And in order to get those crazy angles, I need to obviously blast it with heat so that it can hold its shape. So that each time there's a new layer, the bottom layer is a little bit drier so that it can hold itself up and not fall in. But that doesn't mean I haven't had a few prints that have fallen in on themselves. And when that happens, I kind of just speed up the printer and kind of let it run. Because when I'm printing, my speeds are quite slow. So obviously, if I want to see what it looks like in the end, I just speed it up if there's a mistake. Let it run a little because I want to see what, what the clay kind of does when it's sped up and what happens when mistakes happen. I mean, we're artists. We want to experiment. I've kind of had to learn how to make sure that I give enough attention to the print whilst doing something else. Otherwise, I'm literally going to be sitting there. 24 seven, just blasting it with heat. And you obviously can't blast it with heat all the time because then it's gonna dry out too fast and then it's going to crack. So you need to kind of look at finding that balance. I've had a few that didn't work because of air bubbles. So I've been working through the air bubbles, getting the right consistency in the clay, but every now and then they just happen. And it's just, the way it is and I'm trying to get used to it and embrace air bubbles but sometimes the air bubbles that come out in the clay are too big and you have to throw away that print now you can imagine if you've been running a print for two hours and you just hear like my heart just drops and I'm just like no and then I have to take that item and pretty much recycle it and start again so Getting to terms with that fact, it's fine. I knew it was going to happen, but yeah, two hours in, really? But watching it like disintegrate again and recycle it, it's just, it's sad. It's really sad. Here's actually one of the crazy angles I did. You can see there. So if I turn it to the side, you'll see the pot's kind of, it's kind of missing. So yeah, let's do the other way. So yeah, that angle goes in quite a bit. Let's look inside. Let's do this, do it like that. There we go. It's just one of the first, first ones that I did that really worked. Some of these have like tiny little markings there that where there is air bubbles. So it's not perfect and in the front as well. I don't know if you can see with the camera, it may be hiding some of them. So the clay is not completely perfect all the way around and that's fine because that's just life. Air bubbles happen sometimes and sometimes there's just like small little things in the clay and you're just gonna have to deal with it. A cool tip that I found, it works for me, it may not work for you, but the way that I pack my clay in the container, when I pack it in the last bit of clay that goes in, when it goes through the pipe, that's the first bit of clay that actually comes out and starts to print, most of the big air bubbles are in that part of the clay. The air pressure in the tank is pushing the clay down and compressing it more and more and more. So the more pressure in the tank, the more your clay gets compressed. So I actually run and do a tester print for half an hour. I run it at a slow speed, do that test print, and most of the big air bubbles that could cause like problems in the clay actually come out during that time. And then I get these nice and smooth lines that have minor indents every now and then when there are maybe tiny air bubbles, but I'm okay with that. It's art. It's not supposed to be 100% perfect. So I'm totally okay with that. As long as it's not like this massive hole. I've had to learn how to work with clay differently because I do have nails. I'm a girl. I don't want super short nails. And as a potter, I'm used to kind of handling the pot in a certain way so that you don't nip the clay but because 
before I didn't have to worry about these little lines. It was never such a big problem if I accidentally touched the clay and made a little thing, I can just fill it up. But with these, if you touch it incorrectly, make a dent or something, you can't just fill it up because you lose that beautiful, intricate line that the printer made. And I don't want to wipe all of it away. So I've had to learn how to kind of handle the clay differently and just make sure that, uh, yeah, that I don't make nips in it with my nails. So yeah, I've had to throw away a few. It's been super sad. I did a lot of recycling of my clay this month and just shows you how many mistakes I actually made, but it's totally fine. Uh, but yeah, if you're starting out in pottery, just know it's really important that you recycle your clay. Don't keep buying more clay. If you have clay, learn how to recycle it properly, rework the clay and reuse it again, because otherwise you waste so much money. I don't think you understand. I have... In the beginning when I started pottery, I didn't really recycle that much. And I've learned how much money I've actually lost by not recycling all of my clay. And yes, it's a hard process. You have to rework the clay. It's time consuming. It's like, really, do I have to do this now? But yes, just enjoy it. And I've started to learn how to enjoy it. Like when I'm like reworking the clay, I like, you know, do like these lovely patterns that are soothing and just kind of let the clay do its thing. So yeah, just embrace it. I'm going to finish off this video by creating a new print. It's one that I haven't tried yet, so it can either end up really good or it can be an absolute disaster. I guess it can go either way. Let's see what happens. I'll be standing there with a hairdryer, making sure that it's holding its angles, but some of them are a bit crazy and some are not, so it could go either way. So yeah, I'll see you guys next month. Bye. Mm -hmm.